Boy, oh boy, another great day comes to an end. Hope you guys made some money out there. Hope you had a fantastic Thursday. But it's about that time of day again, right? Time to get back to work Thursday evening, getting ready for a very important Friday end of the week trading session. Got a bunch of ranges on the charts tonight. Got a big news report coming out tomorrow. Lots of great trades I'm tracking for tomorrow. And as always, I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video to make sure you get a game plan to make some money going into the weekend. Uh, before we jump in and get this party going, tonight. Got a lot of great trades I'm tracking for tomorrow. Before we kick this thing off though, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss tomorrow night's video upload. And if you guys enjoy the video tonight, do me a favor. Well, you hit that like button. I appreciate you guys tuning in and supporting this YouTube channel. But enough of the intro, right? Friday is right around the corner. I'll tell you, Friday is setting up for another really great session tomorrow morning in our trade room. Now you'll notice we got a lot of ranges on the charts right now. Range, range, range. Now I'll tell you, the S S&P and the NASDAQ have a little bit of a bullish tone, right, to that trading range right now. Now, we're obviously an overall bear bias, but with that bullish tone to this range right now, we get some great reversal opportunities off the lows. We got some great breakout opportunities for the buyers going higher, and you know it's an overall bear market right now, right? So just like we saw today, we'll definitely be looking for some reversals coming in off the highs and breakouts going lower. So I'll tell you, there's there are easy ways to make money on both the long side and the short side tomorrow on the S&P and the NASDAQ, and I'm going to cover all my favorite trades for, uh, for tomorrow in this video here tonight. Oil is a little bit more complicated, but I'll tell you, when you see tonight's video tonight, you'll see why I'm pretty excited excited for a big day uh, tomorrow on oil. Oil is bearish right now into a range sitting at some levels of support, which, you know, we talked about this last night on the video, could easily produce another one of those slingshot reversals going higher. So buyers definitely have some easy ways to grab some cash going higher on that breakout. And just like we saw today, overall bear bias, we're definitely looking for some reversals back down. So I'm going to talk about the long side and the short side on crude oil as well. Lots, again, and lots of ways to make money going to the end of the week tomorrow. Now, speaking of tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, we've got more big news. Well, let's face it, we really haven't seen much news at all this week. We had that ISM number on Monday, but it's pretty much been a wide open week as far as any news goes here. The PPI number, of course, tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern time is definitely the big news of the morning here tomorrow, so you do want to be aware of that. And, you know, keep in mind, this is an inflation number, right? The PPI number is kind of like the little brother or the cousin of the CPI number, which we'll get next week. You know, keep in mind, right? These inflation numbers, they do lead to some pretty wild market. So we'll do our best tonight to put the game plan together, but be aware, right? Tomorrow morning, we, we may need to kind of refocus or rebalance our strategy tomorrow once that whippiness comes and goes off that news. So definitely don't miss uh, tomorrow morning's trade room. So 8.30 is the big news here for tomorrow. And, you know, as I talked about in last night's video, we are watching right now the E-mini rollover, right? So the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the Russell, right? We're watching that rollover right now, you probably saw a bunch of notices or notifications from your broker, from your software provider today, but uh, we still haven't seen the volume roll. So we'll talk more about that as we go deeper into the video tonight. But be aware, right? Right now on the E-minis, we are trading the 1222 contract. We will be watching for that volume to roll forward to the March 23 contract. It could be tomorrow. It's looking more like it's likely on Monday. So just keep that in your radar tomorrow. And as we go into Monday morning, when you get to your desk tomorrow morning, check the volume. If, if it's more volume on the, on the 323 contract, you'll want to trade that March 23 contract. So keep the rollover on your radar as well. So PPI number, of course, is the big news for tomorrow. And again, it's an inflation number. So just be careful with that whipsaw we get. I run inflation numbers lately, and we'll keep an eye on rollover. Now, back to our charts, though, because, of course, you know, the money is made on the charts, right? News is a catalyst, but we always find the entries and the exits and manage our positions on these charts. And, of course, I'm going to cover all my favorite trades on each of these charts here tonight. So make sure you watch all the way to the end because there'll be, there'll be different money-making opportunities 
all throughout this video lesson here tonight. And I do try to save the best stuff all the way to the end. So let's go first, S&P and SPY. Then we'll go NASDAQ and the QQQ. And we'll wrap things up here tonight on the crude oil and the USO. Couple things you wanna keep in mind here. Again, first of all, this is a tick chart right now. That's an 8,000 tick chart here on the S&P. All of these charts tonight will be tick charts, so keep that in mind. And also, too, the S&P and the NASDAQ are very similar, so one could apply to the other and vice versa. Now, there's a bunch of clues on this chart right now that are tipping us off to kind of where the money-making trades are going to be for tomorrow. We talked about that rollover, right? This is the 1232 contract. People watching that rollover to that March 23 contract. First things first here, right now we do still have an overall bear bias. The market is clearly bullish in the short term right now, but look at a 60-minute chart, look at a 30-minute chart, you can easily see, right? The last three, four days are pretty darn bearish, and we really haven't seen this thing really break that bearish momentum here yet. So we definitely want to be filtering things or looking at this through the lens of a bear market right now. We'll, we'll we'll talk about how that applies to this here in a moment. The next one, of course, is a is a range, right? This is a bullish market into a trading range. You guys are learning all about ranges and, and range rotation inside of our free trading classes right now, right? So bull market, bull you know momentum into that trading range. And one thing about ranges is rotation. And boy, we talked a lot about this last night on the video. Markets love to rotate back and forth. Now you'll notice they rotate up and they really should be trying to rotate back down. And that's why I said it almost feels like there's a failed rotation right now. So if the bears, if the bears can't get this rotation back down again, if the market was to simply break out and go higher, that failed rotation combined with this bullishness into that trading range is a very big clue, right? It's a very bullish clue. And so we definitely have some breakouts on our radar for tomorrow. The next thing here is a very important clue as well. Major support below. We've had this 39.12 half level on this chart here for like a month now, right? It's been there for quite a while. And so that is a very big support level. And the reason why that's important is because when you combine this bullish mark or you know, short-term bullish into a trading range, it's not going to be that easy to sell down here, right? Because as we go lower, right, I've, I'm looking to sell into those right into those major lows. So we're gonna, we're going to talk about how to short this thing as it goes lower because it may not it may not be easy. This is exactly why I said before. There's some really great reversal opportunities off of these lows. And again, because this failed rotation, there's some great breakout opportunities as well. So uh, now, now tonight, what I'll do is I'll talk about, we definitely want to make sure we're ready for the pullbacks, right? Or the reversals off the low. We definitely want to make sure we're ready for a breakout going higher to probably sell it back down or buy it as it goes higher here as well. So let's dig right into it here right now. Now, uh, what I'll do first is why don't we cover the downside first, because that's the one that we're kind of hoping for right now. That's the one that probably will be the easiest to trade. And then later on in the video, we'll talk about the move going higher. Now, if we try to go lower here right now, it becomes a very difficult spot to be a seller because you've got some bullish momentum. The range above you is a magnet. You're at support, support, support levels below. Now, remember, we have a three-day bear bias, right? We're overall very bearish right now. So that's going to be a key part of this for us here to be a buyer on this, right? We have to think about that bear bias. So if I have an overall bear bias and I want to be a buyer, the easiest way to make money or the most effective way to make money, the most consistent way to make money is to think about ways in which we can trap in the sellers and use their stops as fuel. So for example, when I get down into some of these levels of support, because again, we have those bears in control overall right now, I'd like to go out and trap in these bears using what I call a two-try failure pattern. Now, I got to be a little bit patient on this, right? Because again, we have that overall bear bias. But if I can get these bears to try a couple times, what I can do is I can think, okay, where are their stops going to be? And I can buy into those stop losses. Now, we talk a lot about these failure patterns in our free trading class. The one you want to look for is, is either a trap entry below that prior swing, 
right? Or simply buying right into those stops as the market goes back up into that range. Where would the target be on that two try failure? It would be back at the high of that range and then definitely back up around these highs and potentially back up around the high of that bull channel and that 87 and a quarter. I would also keep in mind too, as the market goes lower, don't be surprised if with all those bears in the market, it pulls back, it retests the low, and then once again, same idea, right? We get one, we get two. Again, would love the best possible entry is going to be that trap entry, right? That's the best one. Or, or we simply buy right into those stop losses, right? So it's a bear trap entry, one, two. Think about now where stops are and we're buying into those stop losses. Again, the reason why I want to see two tries for these bears is because of that overall uh, bearish bias. And so keep in mind on that, right? And this could easily happen right here, right here. It could easily happen right here. I think probably the best scenario will be something like this, where the market rolls lower, the bears come out, right? They retest that low, let them take out that low, and then we look for that one, two, trapping the bears, right? And then remember, the range above us is a magnet. So if I can get this thing to kind of punch and go higher, what I can then do is, is combine that failure pattern into a first test pullback. In other words, I can draw a trembling off the highs like this. I can find a channel off the low. I can mark up those prior swings, right? I always like to look left, find those prior swings, and then grab that first test off the low of that channel, right? So think about it, we run lower, and again, this could be here, one, two, back up, it could be a double bottom, retest, and back up. The bottom line is trapping those bears, use their stops as fuel, and then as the market starts to run back up into that trading range, Think about now where we can use that low of that new channel for any of the entry patterns you guys learn in the free trading course. It could be a bear trap, like this example. It could be a seller failure, like these two try failures, right? It could be a strength move. So any of the patterns you guys are learning in that free class, which reminds me, I've been talking a lot about these patterns so far. Um, I know that most of you guys have taken the free classes. You've learned the setups. You're making money with them on your own account right now. But hey, Hey, if you're here for the first time today, if you're watching this for the first time, if you haven't taken that free class yet, what I'll do is I'll put a link up here for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link, take the free trading course. You're going to love it. The strategy I teach in that free class will show you a simple trick that will tell you where the winners are more likely to be that day that we can wait patiently for those entries. And speaking of entries, as part of that free class, you'll learn four different entry patterns to help you start making money with this stuff on your own account. If you're missing the best trades right now, if you're taking too many losses, definitely take that free trading course. It's perfect for someone trying to make the jump into full-time trading. And I have like hundreds of examples of things like failure patterns, right? Pullback combinations inside of that free trading class. So that's how I want to look at it as it goes, as it goes lower. Now think about this one. This is another variation, right? It's a V bottom variation. So now let's say we do take off the downside, but now let's say though, for whatever reason, right? The bears don't try once, try twice and give us that punch back up. They simply kind of pop right back up and begin to grind going higher. These are pretty common, right? Especially as we go into the end of the year and volume gets a little bit lower into the holidays. So we may not be able to kind of get into that thing off those lows. It may kind of spring off of that low. And when it does that, kind of pop and grind like that, you can draw a trend line off the high, find that channel off the low. And remember, my favorite entry technique, which you guys learn more about in that free trading course, is to go out, find some prior swings, and combine those prior swings for bear traps or get below the moving average for a seller failure pattern, right? And again, I'm, I'm keeping it simple right now, right on this video, but you'll learn more about this. You'll see a lot of examples of those inside that free class, right? And again, we know where the market wants to go, right? It wants to go back into that range. It wants to take out those highs and it wants to go take out that 39.87 level. Now, here's the big question, right? Here's the really big question. How do we make money as we go lower, right? How do, oh, sorry. How do we sell it 
as it goes lower. It's it's not going to be easy. Really, the, the, the best way to sell this thing as we go lower is to really kind of flip the script on the buyers. So we've talked about as we go lower, trapping in the sellers, right? That's an easy way to make money in a range bound market. But imagine now we make a run lower, the buyers come in, they try once, we go lower again, the buyers come in, they try twice. This is where the best short is going to be as we go lower. Again, we're an overall bear market, so there's probably going to be a lot of bears there looking to punch out and take out that big low. Now, don't be afraid to use a channel on this. Draw a trend line off those lows, right? Bring it up around that high. See, I'm going with this. Now, channel is great, wouldn't be totally required on this, so we pop lower. Now, watch again, watch again. We pop lower, we pull back, the bears once, we go higher, the bears twice, right? There's two tries there for the bears. That's a stop run and a short squeeze back up into that range. But if we take out that low, we run lower, right? Buyers come in, they try once, buyers try twice. Remember, buyers want to buy low right? They buy it once, they buy it twice. And once those buyers are in, watch those bears coming in and look for a nice short signal trap off of that low, right? We talk about traps in that, in that free video class, right? Get that nice strong red signal candle closing below the moving average. That's the way you want to short this thing as it's going lower. The only other way to short it will be to wait for this market to get back down to take out these lows and then wait for a breakout, you know, going lower. We'll talk about some breakout patterns a little bit later. If we can break below this 39.12 half, and it's very reasonable because we have that big news tomorrow, right? Get that big PPI number tomorrow. So, you know, for all I know, right, it may just crash and, and burn, right? Keep, keep on going lower. We'll talk about some breakout patterns in a moment. But 38.67, right? 38.67, that's pretty much all we have waiting down below us. So we'll talk about some breakout patterns here in a moment but just be aware there's a lot of support down here so unless we can take out those lows and really push through that 39 12 half it's going to be it's going to be a again bearish on the way down but definitely some great reversals going back up into that range all right now we have now we have the move going lower covered how do we trade this thing now as we as we go higher because again it's a bull market into a range there's definitely potential for a bull breakout right now let's grab the nasdaq and we'll talk more about the upside here on the nasdaq like i mentioned the nasdaq and the s p are almost identical right they're very very similar here on this so we ultimately have the same basic idea right we're watching rollover for tomorrow on the nasdaq it's a three-day bear bias it's the overall bear market right now and even though we're bullish right now into a trading range right we're definitely short-term bullish into a range we know that right as the market goes higher right now there's oftentimes more bears waiting up there so we definitely do want to be aware of that and again we'll look at this kind of through the lens of a bear market right now the bullish the bullish range right the bullish range very very important because of course right if they go lower reversals off the low major support below us right as they go lower reversal off the low or right get a trap in those buyers for that short right going down Okay, I don't, I don't want to go over that one, uh, too many times here for you. Waste your time on these videos. So let's talk about the move going higher here. We've talked about the move going lower. As we go higher here right now, again, it's a bear, right? It's a bear bias as we go higher. So buyers want breakouts, right? Sellers, of course, they want, they want reversals. Now, this is going to be interesting because, you know, again, we get some news tomorrow morning. So on the initial breakout higher, Right on the initial breakout higher, we're running right into overhead resistance. There's a range, there's a range below us. We get an overall bear bias. How do I short this thing? Right? There are really three ways to short this, and we just covered them on the buy side on the SP chart. The first one, because we have so much short-term bullish momentum here right now, I can't just simply sell right into that area. What I'd like to do is is use the buyer stops for fuel. And to do that, whenever I'm trying to short off resistance, when I have a short-term bullish momentum, remember, momentum, I'm a short-term trader. 
right? If you're watching this video right now, I assume you are a short-term intraday trader or, or, or day trader as well. So long-term momentum is, is important, but it's not the most important factor. Buyers have all of that short-term control right now. So we want to make sure, get up into resistance and then trap them in, right? Get those buyers trying once, get those buyers trying twice. And really in this scenario, because of that short-term bullishness, I really do want what I call a crown reversal entry, which is basically two tries for the buyers into resistance above the range and that trap entry you guys will see a lot of examples of these um, inside the trade examples inside the free uh, the uh, the free travel website so uh, trap high one two back down in or or we go up buyers come in they pull back they retest that high, right? Because of course, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we know the odds are pretty good. They'll retest, strong move. They're gonna wanna retest, right? So if we do see that retest of that high, then we can be a lot more aggressive with the entry, right? Now the buyers got their, right, got their retest. Now we can wait for, again, when I'm trying to go against the short-term momentum, I want to trap in these buyers and use their stops, right? Because if you're a buyer and you get caught getting long up here, what will your stop loss do, right? It'll trigger what? A bunch of sell orders, right? You're going to sell your way out. So in all reality, when I when I sell into stop losses, I'm being a seller up here and so are the buyers, right? The buyers are selling their way out and that's what causes those big, big jumps or back, or you know, j jumps back down into that trading range. So if we can get that one, two, right? That one, two, that of course now, gives me that short and don't forget as we go lower we can oftentimes find those new channels off the low off the low mark it up off the high find that prior swing right and then again i'm keeping it simple here obviously this could be any of the could be a bull trap could be a buyer failure and we can sell back down again right so remember it's going to be up one two trap high crown reversal or right or it's this right it's that it's that up it's that retest it's that trap in those buyers use their stops as fuel and then grab that first test off the off the high of that channel and then where's the objective well remember the range is a big deal here right so the opposite side of that range 11,582, and then clearly, right, major support levels below uh, could also be an objective uh, for us uh, as well. Another reversal pattern that we talked about before on the S&P would be a, simply a VTOP reversal, right? So we run up, and you'll see an example of one of these on oil today, right? We run up, we run into major resistance. Again, overall bull, you know, overall bear market, short-term bull market, we don't, in this example, get one, two back down instead what happens right instead it simply gets crushed right the bears come right in big money comes in runs this thing back down and we start to kind of pop right uh, pop and then we grind down and as we grind down that's the giveaway right that's the giveaway mark off that low mark off that high I don't want to sell as it goes lower right I want to go out find some prior swings, get above those prior swings, because after all, prior swings are where traps live, get above the moving average, because that's where buyer failures live. Hopefully the buyers will come in, try to buy that pullback. I can sell into their stops. I can grab that first pullback off the 21 moving average for a pullback combination. You guys are learning all about this stuff, right? In the free trading course, we call this the price action cycle, right? The trap, the failure, the pullback combo, the strength move going lower. That's what you want to think about as it as it goes here. And I'll tell you, you know, thinking about what I said earlier, I mentioned earlier that it's not easy to be a seller down here, right? As the market goes lower, we're kind of looking at trapping the bears and back up. Or as it goes lower, buyers try once, buyers try twice, and that trap, right? That trap entry going lower there. One thing I want to kind of point out on this is with the news tomorrow morning, you got to think it's very possible we get that jump up, that slam back down, right? And then kind of like the one, the two, you know what I mean? So we we, we talked about the move lower, but I, I, you remember major news tomorrow. So we might just kind of, you know, we might just jam higher, slam back down. I know it's, I know, remember it's a big inflation tomorrow. And as it kind of slams back down, those, those, those bull traps, 
right? Those bull traps off the high. And again, the objective here, of course, in that situation is to get back down and take out, you know, some of these big lows, right? Because again, it's an overall bear market, right? So whether or not, whether or not it goes up and slams back down or goes lower, again, I think it's very reasonable to think it may go up, right? Come crashing back down here. And then as it comes crashing down, all of those bull traps are where the pros are looking to finish off that move back down. All right, so kind of keep that in mind. It's kind of a little side note there um, as we as we go. Now, we could definitely get breakouts tomorrow. You know, looking at like a four-hour chart right now, if you look at a four-hour chart right now, a four-hour chart on the E-minis looks like this. And we get a kind of a bull market into a range. It went up, came back down. And now on the four hour, the four hour looks like it's ready to kind of blast back up into that range. They pretty much on the four hour have completed that pendulum swing pretty much. So when you look at it in terms of a longer term time frame, there's a lot of potential. This market may continue right going higher here. Now, again, you know, we're still pretty bearish in the last couple of days here. So we got to wait for proof on that. But I'll tell you, though, on the S&P and the NASDAQ, there's definitely potential we may get some breakouts going higher so what would be some breakout patterns that we could use well my two favorite breakout patterns are the one two three breakout and the pop and grind breakout so the one two three breakouts pretty easy i want to go out take out that high right strong pop up i want to pull back to the 21 moving average and i want a strong jump off the 21 EMA. I call these one, two, three breakouts because it's one, two, and jump, right? So once we get that one, two, three jump, then I can go out, mark off that high. I can go down, find that channel low. I can drill down, find my prior swings, and I can use those entry patterns you guys are learning in the free course, right? The traps, the failures, the pullback combos, right off of that low. Keep in mind, keep in mind, when you get these breakouts, the first leg, and the third leg are usually quite symmetrical, right? So keep that in mind as far as targets are going to go overhead. Obviously, I don't know how big that first leg will be right now, but we will know tomorrow if and when we get that breakout pattern. Another one here would be a pop and grind. These are very, very common. Pop and grinds are very common. We pop up, we grind, we grind, we grind, and what do we do? We find that trembling off that high, we mark that channel off that low, we get below prior swings. I'm not making this stuff up, guys, right? These things are everywhere if you know what you're looking for, right? So pop and grind, right? So we pop up, right? Pop up. We don't pull back to the moving average and jump from there. No, we pull, we, we pop up and we grind and we grind and we grind. The grind is the giveaway. We mark off that high. We mark off that low. Remember, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, what do we expect? A pullback and a retest of that high. In this case, find those swings. And again, look for the entry off the low of that channel, right? First leg third leg will give you a good objective overhead. Now, remember, overall bear bias, right? So a strong pop up is not going to be enough. It has to be a, it has to be a good pop, a hold the pullback and go or going to pop and begin to grind right up more as we go. Definitely getting through that 740 half level overhead and then from there we got 846, we got 951. And, you know, definitely a bit of a wet dream tomorrow for the NASDAQ buyers to go back to that 979 level. That's the prior week close. It seems like that would be a little bit, well, hey, who knows, right? It seems unrealistic right now, but tomorrow, PPI number, who knows, right? The S&P, of course, has the same basic stuff overhead as well, right? If we can get the S&P to break out going higher, we've got a breakout target up overhead there at uh, 40.15 to 40.06, right? So again, right, it's that one, two, pop, find that channel, buy that first test, right? It's that pop and grind, find that channel, buy that first test. Remember, be careful with just one pop up, right? We could easily pop up and come running right back down, find that channel for that short or make it really wild, right? Pop up and really run down, one try for the buyers, two try for the buyers, right? There's that trap going lower, all right, guys? And I know I'm covering a lot right now, so don't worry, we'll, we'll sort this stuff out tomorrow.
tomorrow morning and every morning uh, in our trade room just after uh, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Okay, I think we've got a pretty good handle now on how to use this bearish bias with these bullish ranges right now. It's, that's not easy stuff, right? So if you're if you keep if you keep it up with me right now, excellent job for you. And I'll tell you right now, if you're watching this video right now, you know, 30 some odd minutes into this video right now, you are the person I do these videos for. You know, I get a lot of comments in the comment section about, you know, make your videos 10 minutes. And I'm thinking, how on earth can I how how on earth can I give you all the information you need to make money tomorrow in two and a half minute splits? Anyways, if you're watching right now, I know you're dedicated. I know you're committed. I know you're putting the effort in right now. That's what it takes, right? It takes consistent application of this. So definitely good job on that. Wrapping up tonight, though, on the crude oil. What's going on here right now? Uh, first of all, same thing, right? Same three-day bear bias. So that will be a lens that we'll look at this through tonight, right? Now, you'll notice strong move down. Anytime we see a real strong move in one direction, what do we expect? We expect a pullback and a retest of that low, right? So bears have a lot of the short-term and long-term momentum right now. But look what we have here. A range is how we began the day. Right, kind of a weird, right, little range at the beginning. We pop up, we roll back down. Oh, and by the way, look at this pop and grind you see right here. This is a great example I mentioned earlier, right? Right now with these bear markets, we get a lot of these, right? Where it pops up and it slams lower and starts to grind down, right? What do you do in that situation? We know what to do. You find that trend line, you mark off that high, right? You get that swing, you got it, right? And you sell that first test. That right there is very, well, hey, it may happen right over here, right? It may easily go running up, pop down, grind back down. We might see history repeat itself off that high here. It almost seems like that's what oil is kind of looking to do here at this point for tomorrow. Anyways, I'm getting off, I'm getting off track here right now. The key I want to make point of though is, is we have that trading range. We run up, we roll all the way down now. Now think about this. What should happen right now? What should happen is we should go back and retest that low. If the bears, if they really have control of this, we should be retesting that low. And really for the most part, we should be finishing that move back to 70, right? 70 is that big, big level. Look at a daily chart on the oil. O open a daily chart on oil. On a daily chart, you're gonna see that oil go up all the way to 120, 130, right? Back down. And this is that 70 area right there. Right? That's, you know, it's, it's a little bit lower than it's what, 69, 64, or something like that. But you have to think that that prior top on the daily on oil, you've got to think that has potential to be a really big bounce area, at least in the short term, right, on the oil. That level is right there, right? 69, 64. Again, don't take my word for it. Open up a 14, 40 minute or a daily chart on the CL 123, and you'll see that, that, that 64 level right there. So the buy, the sellers, with all that strong move down, they should be finishing off that move. What if they don't? What if we fail that retest and then go higher? What will that do now? We talked about this last night, right? With that range, this creates what could easily be a slingshot, right? And it could really run higher. So again, I think it's definitely worth looking at some potential long trades going higher. And we definitely want to keep an eye out for that VTOP or reversal off of that high here, all right? I also think it's important to notice too, we're literally, this is almost, it's almost identical to where we were yesterday, right? Yesterday evening, we're sitting at major support with a range and that range rotation. Here we are once again, like deja vu, sitting at major lows, major support with a range above us and a potential, I don't wanna get too far ahead of myself, but potential for that, for that, for that uh, reversal going higher here. So, you know, a lot of the same game plan that we talked about in last night's video can also be applied here as we go. So real quickly here, what seems most likely right now is kind of that slingshot move going higher. How do you make money in an overall bear market on a slingshot move? What you do is, is you get up here, you wait for the move higher, you get bears trying once, you get bears trying twice, and you literally buy into their stop losses. If I want to be a buyer in an overall bear market into areas of resistance, I want to get those sellers to commit. Remember, sellers, they want to sell high, right? They sell once, they go higher, they sell twice, right? See it, see it right there? Okay, so that's, that's going to be your two, right? Your two tries for the bears. 
Stops are sitting right above that high now. Nice strong signal candle closing above the moving average. You guys are learning about this stuff in the free trading course, right? That's going to be your way to buy this as we go higher. Bear traps, right? Bear traps as we go. And then once we get up around these highs, obviously that 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 pop and V top grind, right? That we talked about before is certainly something we're watching for over here. I would also too kind of keep in mind to a crown reversal, right? So buyers come in, they try once, they try twice, right? We get that trap high. That's your crown reversal back in, right? Sell that short below the moving average. Or, or we run, we run up. The buyers retest the high because it's a very strong move higher. It would make very much sense to retest the high. Then what? Then we get the rookies roped in, right? The pros are buying low. The rookies come in. They're saying, all right, let's try to break out. Buyers try a few times here right now. Their stops get hit. That's a two-try failure, a double-top reversal, we call it, in the video classes. And then as we're running lower, this is where the fun begins, right? We mark off that high, that low, mark off that high. And I always tell my students in the trade room, whatever you do, don't miss that entry right there, right? Because sometimes you may not get a good reversal entry. You know, sometimes you may not get it. But you don't want to miss that first test, right? Because then at that point now, the top is held. You know, momentum is now shifted. Everybody's in a pile on that one. It could be a bull trap. could be a buyer failure, right, as we as we go, all right? And again, this point here, we're trying to go back down and retest those lows here. Now, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. We got some more levels overhead here. You know, one of these days, we'll get a big pop running higher. And again, we've got, we have, of course, that uh, that big inflation number tomorrow. So if we do pop up, and again, on the way higher here, right, on the way higher, bears once, bears twice, right, buying those traps here. But we go up, right? Let's say we take out those highs up there. The buyers come in. They say, no, we're not done yet. And they jump off that moving average, right? Anytime I see a one, two, three, what do we do? Remember, remember, I can't buy that one, right? I'm not going to buy that one for the same reason I want to buy that one right there right? Big no-no. Not not in this environment, right? Not not in this environment. If it was a bullish overall market, sure, right? But not in this environment. We want to wait for those buyers to hold and then find that high, find that low, you got it, and grab that first test is the best test. Or, right, we pop up, we start grinding, right? The grinder, right? The grinder is a giveaway here. And remember, it's got to really push, right? Very convincingly through this area of resistance. If it pops up, begins grinding, now we know where that channel is, right? And now we can simply get that pull back, get below some prior swings, strong move in one direction, right? Wants to watch, wants to retest the high. So we get below prior swings for traps. We get below the moving average for a failure setup, right? Pull back combo and back up to retest the high. Now, what do you think the odds are we get a strong move up like that? We get that, we get that easy winner off the low. And then once we go back up and retest the high, now guess what? Overall bear market, right? We're now at major resistance up overhead. The buyers come in, the rookies come back in. They foolishly buy high and the bears are waiting right there to sell right into their stop losses. That's a very, very realistic scenario that could happen if we can get, first of all, a pop going higher that holds and keeps going. Remember, that's the key here right now in that overall bear bias. That's a very exciting opportunity for us uh, here for tomorrow. Now, as we go lower, right? As we go lower, it's very difficult to want to sell down here, right? Very difficult. Notice how right here, right? See one right here. You see one right here. Every time we go lower, bears try, bears try, bear trap. Back up, right? We go lower. Bears try once, bears try twice, bear trap right there, right? These are the patterns we're looking for to buy these major support levels in an overall bear market. We go lower, bears try once, bears try twice. Again, this is on a bull market. If it's a bull market, I'm going aggressive on these. In a bear market though, we've got to be a little more patient. So as we go lower, trap in those bears, two tries, use those bear traps, buy into stop losses, use those stops as fuel. It could be a it could be a trap there, it could be down to right, retest that, retest that low, then from there as well, right? One, two, and then back up grab that spike higher, find that new channel, 
right? And we're buying off that low, right? Bear trap to try failure into that first test off that channel. And you know what I'm going to say, right? You know how we finish this thing up, right? If it takes out that low, pops, pulls back, and blasts, yeah, baby, that means we're going lower, right? One, two, three, breakout, find that new channel, right? And short that first test, or or it's that pop and that grind running lower. Remember, it has to really clear below that 69, 64, right? I'm not selling that pullback right into that low, right? It's more likely to fail and go back higher. If we can crack below uh, 69, 64, boy, there is a wide open space below you. So big round numbers become the key at that point. 65, we're going to go from 70, most likely better than 65. It does seem a bit unrealistic, right? Right now it definitely does but again we've got some big news tomorrow the world's a wild place right now with opec making changes all the time though so we'll keep an eye on that breakout going lower but at least now you've got some breakout tools going lower you know how to smash and grab some cash right on the way higher here and had a good that reversal coming back down again all right i'm excited I'm excited. I got some big news tomorrow. We've been waiting on this PPI report all week here this week. Don't forget the rollover. Keep your eyes on rollover uh, as well. It's looking like it's going to be Monday, so just be aware, aware of that. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, we're going to get together in our trade room with a front row seat for the PPI number. If you're tired of missing the best trades right now, come out and join me. Come trade it with me. I have the entire system laid out for you, all the software tools you'll need, all the worksheets to follow along with me in the trade room. And, of course, as always, I'll put all of the membership links, all the free class links. I'll put all that stuff for you guys in the description of the YouTube video. If you have any trouble getting in, any trouble getting access to any of this stuff, please don't be afraid to call the office. I know I go pretty fast on these videos to save time and give you guys as much information as I can to make money tomorrow, but we can definitely slow things down. So call the office, shoot me a, a live chat, right? Or a Skype message. I'm always here, right? I'm always here to help out. Um, I, I definitely do check the comment section below, but the easiest way to get help immediately is to call the office, send us an email, jump on live chat. You know, we're pretty much always sitting by there here in the office. All right, guys, on that note, wrap things up here, guys. Hope you learned a bunch here tonight. Hope you use this knowledge to make a killing tomorrow. Remember that news tomorrow morning. Keep your eyes on the uh, on the rollover volume, and if you got any questions on the way, drop me some comments in the comment section below, or hit me up in the office. I'm always here to help out. All right, guys, my name is Joseph. Be well. Be nice to each other. If you don't see guys tomorrow morning, we'll see you guys next week for the final week of the newsletter of the year. We'll talk more next week, guys. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.